Hi everybody, Don Smith here. And today I want to take a look at a cool piece of software, in my opinion, for processing images of high ISO. And it is a raw processor. It's called DxO Optics Pro 10. I have been using this software since version 8, and I've got to say that version 10 is much improved, and especially in processing images of high ISO. Um, we're currently in Lightroom right now, and I'm going to show you two images captured with my new Sony cameras. This first one we see up was captured with the Sony A7S. Now this, in my opinion, is probably the best camera on the market currently for shooting at high ISO. And if you look up here in the top right under the histogram, you're going to see that I captured this image at uh, along the Big Sur coast at Point Sur light station of this setting crescent moon at 10,000 ISO. Just a little bit of a backstory here. I was out testing the camera with a friend of mine, Mike Hall, and we were actually leaving the locations that um, we were using the moon and starting to drive back home and we came up to this section uh, having no idea that this crescent was still going to be hanging above the horizon and quickly pulled the car over got the gear out set up and i used the uh, sony 70 to 200 on this camera the a7s and quickly focused as I knew that moon was setting quickly, um, dialed in this ISO. You can see it's the widest aperture is F4. I chose that and it was a five second exposure. This next image was actually captured this past March um, prior to the start of my Northern Arizona workshop um, where we actually start along the south rim of the Grand Canyon. Now this one, I uh, used the Sony a7S also, but I was getting more comfortable with it by this time. And you can see I had pushed the ISO here up to 25,600. So let's take a look. I'm going to zoom in here 100% and we're going to take a look. This is at 10,000. You can see there's, there's some noise, um, no color noise really. This is just luminance noise. And it's really, it's, it's not bad. That's 10,000 ISO. And now here's 25,600 ISO. This was on a moonless night in the Grand Canyon. And you can see quite a bit more noise. So it's uh, going to take some noise reduction. And what we're going to do, I'm going to take a look now. I want to go ahead and select both of these. And we're going to open it up into the new... DxO Optics Pro 10. One of the things I like about it is it will integrate with the export module in Lightroom. So we're going to come into File and come down to Plugin Extras and you'll see Transfer to DxO Optics Pro 10. And I'm going to click that and my images um, come up. Now, I'm not going to do anything in this program. This is what I really love about it. DxO Optics Pro 10 is a raw processing uh, software. It's not replacing my Lightroom. What I like about this software is strictly their prime noise reduction. Now, I'm going to come over here. I'm just going to show you quickly the interface here. You can see there's all my, my folders for my photos. So I could open up directly into DxO Optics Pro 10 if I wanted to. Here's all my metadata. So I am currently select, selected onto the, the image I shot at Big Sur. And here's the settings that I told you. Um, this was actually back in November of 2014. And you can see that I was ISO 10,000 f4 five seconds um, had my had the Sony uh, 70 to 200 set at 131 millimeters for this um, composition. Let's click over to the um, image I shot at the Grand Canyon. Um, come back over. This was shot on March 19th of 2015, 25,000 ISO. And um, the reason it's not picking up the f-stop here, I had actually, via a Metabones adapter, had attached 
my Nikkor 14 to 24. So it does not pass through the aperture. The aperture is set on a manual ring that's um, on the converter itself. But it does pass through um, my time. Also, the question comes up when I'm using it with a Nikkor lens, will it autofocus? And the answer is no. But I can tell you, um, using the new Sony cameras and um, using their peak focusing, all these stars, when they're in focus, will have will turn red. And that means that the, it, the camera is finding the edge and telling me that it's in focus. So it's really kind of a no-brainer to use these lenses even without autofocus. And when I'm shooting a uh, landscape mode, I am rarely, if ever, shooting in autofocus mode anyway. I am always shooting in um, manual focus mode. So I'm gonna come back down here and I'm gonna select both these images. Now, I haven't touched anything. One of the things I really like when we come into uh, Pro Optics 10, and actually, let me deselect. So let me just get back over here. Um, to my Big Sur image. If I come up in the top left, or excuse me, let's go over to the right hand side. If I come up to the far top right hand side, you see where I have apply presets. And I'm gonna open it up. I really like the DxO standard, but you can see I get different looks um, and I can select on any one of these looks as a starting point. So uh, I happen to like the standard here and I'm gonna select that. Now you can look over here in noise reduction, and this is really gonna be the big one I'm gonna to get to in just a moment. But I'm gonna come on over now and I'm gonna click onto my Grand Canyon, and we're gonna go back to apply preset, and I'm gonna click on DxO standard. So now I've got uh, just a starting point. I'm really not gonna to touch anything else. I'm going to go ahead and command click to select both of these. Now, here's where the real magic comes in. By default, under detail, you will see noise reduction on, and there is high quality and prime. And this, this little window here is 100% representation. When I click to prime, uh, according to DxO Optics, I'm gonna get at least another stop of noise reduction with no loss of clarity, just by simply clicking on that prime button. Now that's pretty awesome because um, in the example of this Sony A7S, uh, 25,600 is now gonna look like 12,300, which is on that camera, very, very good. All right, I'm not touching anything else here. I've done a preset, I've clicked on prime. Now let's come down, follow the cursor here, right next to where it's highlighted in blue messages. You're gonna see that little icon when, when I click and hold, it's gonna say export to Lightroom. So this little box will come up and you can see I could change it. I could export into uh, whatever program I wanted. I could export it into, um, I'd have to go back over in the preferences, but I could export it into Photoshop if I want, but I want to reroute it into Lightroom. So I've already set it up this way. I get some choices here under action. I could export it as a DNG, but in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and export it as a TIFF. I am going to leave it in 16-bit mode. Don't put it down into 8-bit because we still want to do some processing possibly when we get back in the Lightroom. And I always choose the profile Adobe RGB. Now, I'm going to go ahead and just click Export. Okay, and um, we're going to use some unique names. Or I, actually, I'm just going to overwrite because I had done this on a, prior to recording this video and that's why that box came up for both images. All right, let's come back down here to the bottom. You see it's lit blue, export to Lightroom. And if I click on this arrow here, you're going to see a little box here um, that's going to tell you how long it's going to take to export. Now, um, when I was uh, playing around with this and trying it prior to recording this video, it took a little over a minute. I wanna say about a minute and a half. So we're just going to let this run. Now here's one of the big differences. In DxO Pro Optics 9, it, may, it could have taken up to five minutes per image to process this out. 
um, so you would have had to uh, plenty of time. You could have <laughs> walked out and uh, had a meal in that time that it would have taken the process. So you can see we're two thirds of the way there and we're only at just coming up on a minute now. They've really, really sped the process up. Uh, the other cool thing about DxO Pro Optics 10 is that the profiles for your lenses and cameras are already in here. And if they're not, if you were to have shot with a camera that wasn't already loaded in here, you would get a box that would come up with the profiles. Now you can see we're exporting into Lightroom. Okay, and there they come up on the bottom left down there and we'll get to them in a moment. But um, let me finish um, my, what I was saying about the DxO Optics Pro 10. It already has your lens profiles, your camera profiles. So it's profiling your combination of camera and lens in the back room, background. You don't have to worry about any of that. Um, now I know you're saying, well, hey, Lightroom has a, the uh, same thing, and they do. I just think it does a better job in DxO Optics Pro 10. Um, you can download a version and test it for 30 days and see for yourself. All right, let's move along. Now, you're going to see, I'm going to come over here in the develop mode, so it'll put these tags up here. Let's start with the Big Sur image. Here is my RAW file as I brought it in. Here is my DxO uh, with prime noise reduction applied. So I'm going to select both of these, and I'm going to tap the C key to go into candidate mode. Let's select this. So now you see I've got them side by side. Here's the original RAW, and over here on the left is the DxO with prime noise reduction applied. So I'm going to click up here. Let's come back over here to the original RAW, and I'm just clicking on it. This is a 100% view of the RAW file prior to any noise reduction applied. Okay, let's come over to DxO Pro Optics 10, and there is the prime noise reduction. Quite a difference along with the preset that warmed this scene back up, similar to what my eyes saw. It. Now, here's a little test we can do. I'm going to click back over on the RAW file and I'm going to come under develop. And um, let's make sure here, hold on, I want to make sure I have, there we go, I want the RAW file here. And what I want to do is try to get through photo, or excuse me, through Lightroom, this file using Lightroom's noise reduction to as close to the DxO optics file. Uh, so I've already pre-tested this to kind of speed things along. And to get it close, I'm going to have to come up around 60. Okay. And now what we're going to do is I'm going to come back over. We're looking at the DxO uh, processed file. Let's zoom in. Now we're going to go to the Photoshop process file and we'll zoom in. Now it's not too bad, but if we scroll, ar scroll around with Photoshop, it's tended to take my stars and really kind of soften them down. Let's back up here. And we're going to come back over to the DX. Oops, excuse me. Let me go backwards. OK, here's the DxO optics file. And when I scroll around, you're going to see that it's kept the detail here quite a bit better in my stars and over there in my light and along the edge of the headland here at Point Sur. So um, that's a 10,000 ISO shot. All right, so let's do now, let's come up and what we're going to do now is take a look at the one shot at 25,600. So I'm going to select both, tap the C key for candidate. Let me go over and reduce this one down. So now we've got DxO file. This time they've just flipped. I've got it on the right hand side. I've got my unprocessed raw over here on the left hand side. So. Let's, uh, let's first take a look. I'm going to kind of come right up. The section I'm going to choose is right up from this light and at the bottom of the canyon. And when I click up, you're going to see this is this was on a moonless night, by the way. Uh, no moon. To my eye, I could not see down in that canyon. It was a black abyss. 
This is what the camera recorded at 10 seconds to Sony A7S. Isn't that amazing? And then run through the prime noise reduction. 25,600 ISO. That, that is just, to me, phenomenal. Let's come over to the unprocessed file. I'm going to click right above the light again. Look at the difference there. So let's take the unprocessed file and we're going to go into Lightroom. And again, I'm going to take this up to about, so I'm going to have to go to about 60. Yeah, that's looking pretty close, 61. And um, now I'm going to come back over to DxO. Let's go back and forth. That's in Photoshop, or excuse me, Lightroom. This is in DxO. Here's what I really want you to concentrate on. As we scroll down more into the canyon, this is DxO. Look at the detail it, it retained down in there. Again, a moonless night, phenomenal. My eyes could not see anything. Back it up uh, to the Lightroom processed with noise reduction. And, you know, I could bring the detail out a little bit, but then I'm bumping back in a little bit of noise. You can see there's a lot of hot pixels in there. So it's really, um, I'm not trying to sell you this program. I get nothing out of it. I'm not affiliated with DxO Optics, unfortunately. Um, I'm going to get back into candidate mode there. There we go. And let's reduce this down. There we go. Um, look at on, on the DxO Optics also, it started to pull a bit of the Milky Way out. Over here, it gets a little more mottled looking, you know, kind of that when you kind of go heavy on luminance noise reduction. And look, especially down in this area, again, this is the um, raw file that had the noise reduction from Lightroom applied. Look at all the detail down in here um, with the DxO Optics file. So it, uh, the one caveat, now if you're going to buy DxO Optics Pro 10, it is $199. You want to get what they call the elite version. And for me, it's really kind of a no-brainer um, as I have Getty Images represent my work. And if I could just sell one of my night images, it would more than pay off this program and then some. So I only go into the DxO Pro Optics 10 if I want to utilize the prime noise reduction software and their, their presets, which are really, really good. Um, can I use it as a standalone raw processor? Yes, but I will say I still like Lightroom the best. So I use it in conjunction with Lightroom. So there you have it. That's kind of a, a preview of the DxO Pro Optics 10 software. If you go to their page and download a 30-day free trial, you can check it out for yourself. And until next time, this is Don Smith, and we'll talk to you later.